guys welcome back to my youtube channel so if today is your first time on this channel i'm saying um welcome to my channel my name is bella royal and i am your favorite online fashion tutor so in this tutorial today i'm going to be teaching us this lovely top it's um a free not really too tight to free um the blouse top with a cold shoulder okay so i'm going to be teaching us how to cut the cold shoulder major concentration is on the cold shoulder sleeve okay so um i've placed out my pattern on my fabric my fabric is folded into four and this pattern is a basic pattern it's a basic bodies pattern if you don't know how to cut your basic bodies pattern please refer back to my video on how to cut your basic bodies pattern the only difference is that from here to here is the waist and the one i thought stopped at the waist the only thing you're going to do now is to extend it to your desired top length wherever you want your top to be, be it's 22 24 25 wherever you want your top length to stop just extend it down and impute your hip measurement divided by four that's how to get a top pattern so diving into it my fabric is folded on it's folded into four for both the front and the back so the back now is going to be cut on fold so this is the back then the front will have a button stand which is about 2.5 inches okay the space here is 2.5 inches so you just place your pattern on it and cut out so i'm going to, i'm going to cut this out now then we'll go over to the neck line the neck depth and the neck width so i'll just cut this out now and we'll, we'll go over to the neck line So please all um, my pattern have sewing allowance included okay so I have you can see here that is why it's good to label your pattern I don't know if you can come closer and see I labeled it one inch sewing allowance and 0 0.5 inches and um, 0 0.5 inch is the length of my blouse pattern is 28 and there is plus one inch sewing allowance equals to 29 so this will just basically help me to know what and what i did when i was cutting this pattern okay and it will save you the stress of going over to cut patterns every time you want to make a dress for someone So I'm done cutting out my pattern. This is just a basic top. So I will impute my neckline now. For the back, I'm going to be using three and a half inch width for both front and back. And the back, I'll be using one inch depth, just one inch. And the front, I'll be using three inches. Okay, three inches for for the front and one inch for the back. So I'll cut out. So this is for the back. So I'll raise the back up now to cut to cut my front.
so after cutting the necklines make sure you mark out your button stands with a notch okay with a notch make sure you indicate your button stand with a notch do, the, do this for both the upper part and the lower part of your fabric so i'll do it here too with a notch So this is what we have then for the sides. I want to give it a curve. If you check very well the picture we have, there is a curve. So I want to give it. So I want to give it a curve. I can now take this off. This is my pattern, and I'll keep it very well in case I have another project for this same customer. So for the curve. I will come up by three inches. This is at the side, the side seam. Okay, I'll come up by three inches and I will just loop it down. Let's say, um, remember, I have one inch sewing allowance, so that will be five. I'll do it to five inches, like I came in by five inches, so adding my one inch sewing allowance will give me six inches. So I just slope it down to there, or you can just slope it down to the end. Okay, so you can just slope it down to the end. It depends on what you want. So anyone, anyone is is actually fine. All we need is the curve. Okay, so three inches. You can go higher. You can go lower. It depends. Depends on what you want. Depends on your creativity, okay? So I'll shape out. So guys, now the next thing to do after this is to iron on my interfacing. A lightweight interfacing. I should be using SD on this button stand, button hole stand, button hole and button hole stand, okay? This is um, 2.5 inches that I left here. I'm going to iron on my interfacing then. So after ironing on my interfacing, I'm going to fold in half inch first to conceal the rough edges. Then I'll fold over. If you fold in half inches, it's going to remain two inches because we left two and a half inches. So I'm going to fold again another one inch. Okay. I'm going to fold again another one inch so it will be something like this and i will sew straight i'll do that for this and this, this is just to sew the um button stand and the um, button hole stand okay so after doing that i'll get back to us so guys i've gone ahead to um iron in let me open it so you can see my hair stay you can see my first half inches then I I toned it again and ironed in one inch. So the I like pressing all my things before I go to sew. It gives me it makes it easy for me. So this is the 2.5 inches. Then I ironed in half inch, then close it up with one inch. Okay, so this is it. Then I went ahead to cut my um, sleeve so this is just um, a shape we like call it shapeless it's just a straight sleeve without any um, any form of shape just from the arm oh I brought it straight down because I want it to be free so that I can pleat here and pleat it inside this cuff it has a band this band is about five inches in width so by the time i put it on fold so by the time i put it on fold like this 
because it's going to be on fold. By the time I put it on fold, it's going to be 2.5 inches and I need 2 inches. So the half inch is for sewing allowance, okay? So the the width or rather the length is her cuff her wrist the her wrist is nine inches so nine inches divided by two will give you 4.5 so by the time you um add half inch is that will give you five inches so i have six inches here this is so i have six inches here from here to here six inches so 4.5 is the real measurement plus half inch is then one inch for sewing allowance so on fold is 2.5 so i'll use half inch to join it to this part and this one i'll pleat it like this okay so that's what i'll go to join now i'll join this then sew down this um button stand this thing that i've ironed here i'll use my machine to sew it down and i'll get back to us so guys this is my pattern piece this is my back this is the true front and these are my sleeves i've prepared the sleeves then i've prepared my button stand and my button hole stand if you can see the thread i just run it down okay the next thing to do is to join the shoulder for the back and front after joining the sh shoulder you join your sleeve and close up the sides with your um sewing allowance so i'll go now to join the two shoulders attach my sleeve close up the sides then you can hem the bottom part so when we come back we'll talk about the cold shoulder so guys moving over to the cold shoulder so after fixing your sleeve you make sure you pin down um pin down the two sleeves together okay pin them down together the shoulder should be matching up very well okay let me pin this place okay so this is my shoulder this is the neckline this is my shoulder and this is my sleeve okay so from the shoulder these measurements i'm giving totally depends on you okay it's it's not compulsory it's not um standard when i finish sewing this you will see what it gave me so you can know whether you can increase or decrease and i will advise you start with smaller number so that if it's the opening is not enough for you you can record but if it's too big for you there is nothing you can do about it again okay so you i i'll advise you start with a smaller number then you see it if it's too small you record if it's because if it's too big it has spoil so i'll start from my shoulder from the neckline i'll go in by two inches two and a half inches rather two and a half inches from the neckline two and a half inches then this is my arm o this this place is my arm o at the arm o i'll go down by two inches as well remember the shoulder side is two and a half inches this place two inches then along my sleeve i will also do two inches or two and a half let's do two and a half I'll also do two and a half inches okay so you connect them together so you can use your curve to get it right to get it right you can use your curve okay to connect so I will still repeat the measurements I used so from my neckline I came in by two and a half inches totally depends on you along my arm o I came down by two inches as you can see 
then along my sleeve line i came down by two and a half inches so here two and a half inches from here two inches and here two and a half inches so i'll cut this out now and after that i'm going to be using a bias tape to tape this as and to finish um the hole then i'll use any color of my choice to finish the neckline but i think i'll just be doing a simple piping if you don't know how to do piping leave a comment in the comment section let me know if i'll do a video on that so i think i'll do a piping then use bias to finish these rough edges add my button and button hole and that will be all for the class so let me cut this out So this is what we have this is what we have you can see this this is what we have so if it's too small for you you can go down along the sleeve area if it's too wide there is nothing you can do about it that's why i say you should start from small number okay so let me go and finish it off with bias so guys this is what we have made this is so lovely so let me go closer to it so this is the cold shoulder my mannequin don't have hand if not you would have seen how it will be so guys i later went down along the sleeve area by one inch Remember, it has three points, the shoulder point, and then the armhole point, then the sleeve point. So I went down by the sleeve point because I want it to look exactly like um, the sample picture. The, the first one I caught was too small, so I wanted to look exactly like the sample picture. So I went down by one inch and connected it to the arm O point, not the shoulder point. I didn't touch the shoulder point. I just went down by one inch and connected it to the arm O point. Then this is the neckline. If you don't know how to pipe, how to pipe a neckline very well, I created a bias using this fabric. I created my own bias using this fabric so if you don't know how to neatly pipe a neckline like this with your own um, bias let me know in the comment section so that I can do a video on it so I made bias with the fabric and piped the neckline then remember I told us to finish off the arm um, the hole with bias you can either use the already made bias which I used here or you can still use this type of bias from from the fabric so any one of your choice so this is the um the sleeve area this is the sleeve this is the sleeve area and i'll fix my buttons later I just i just used pin to mark down where my buttons are going to stay so i'll fix my so i'll fix my buttons later so thank you guys so much for staying with me so far and um, please if you have any question drop it in the comment section don't forget to like this video if it was helpful subscribe to the channel if you've not subscribed to the channel share this video comment like okay and don't forget you can send me um style inspirations of what you want me to recreate on this channel my whatsapp number or link will be in the description box below thank you guys so much till we meet again bye